Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome to our live stream. Sorry, I'm a little late. We keep moving the buttons around on the back so I can never just click go live. Um, all right, so let's see. What do we have on the agenda for today? Um, oh, that's right. Okay, so we we're talking about three different ways. Let's see, I have it right here. Three different ways um, to build your personal brand. Okay, um, this one's actually very easy. So let me tell you what the three-step process is. And then from there, you can drop in your follow-up questions. Um, step one, you have to create your own website. Uh, right now, I was hired to write this growth hacking textbook. I collected contributors for it. A lot of them wanted the free publicity to make themselves, to get their um, achievements out there. They didn't have their own websites. So if you don't have your achievements listed anywhere, there's no way for people to know what you've achieved. So LinkedIn is not enough. Um, you have to put it on something like addysusan.com. You can look at mine as an example. Um, we just moved a lot of things around so that it is easier for people to, um, to consume all of the, uh, the highlights from my career. So you want to do something like that where you make it easy for people to feel like they got to know you by going through your own website that's in your own branding. That's step one. Step two, I have it written down. Okay, after that, you want to, here it is. Sorry, we have like nine projects working on right now. Okay, so first you need your own website. You list what you've achieved there. You list it in a way that's fun for people to read, that's not too long, that doesn't dive too deep into anything. Think of it like a first date. You want people to see your professional summary like a short dating profile, not like a tome. Um, step two is the trust bar. So you want some sort of press coverage. You want something that shows that other people value your knowledge and what you've achieved. And not only do they value your knowledge and what you've achieved, but you know how to take what you've achieved. You know how to take your knowledge, package it, and present it to others so they can follow your process to get similar results. Um, a lot of people think that's very easy to package your knowledge and present it in a way that's easier, easy for others to consume until they try to do it and nobody buys their checklist, their Excel, whatever it is. Um, so the second thing is showing people is getting that press coverage where you have your opportunity to show that what you know can be replicated. Um, that is, uh, once you have that press coverage, you can build something called a trust bar. The trust bar is essentially a row on your website that says, uh, it lists off all the publication you've, publications you've been on. On addysusan.com, we actually just embedded all the interviews that I was on. So you can click and watch all the interviews. Um, there are two tools that you can use to easily get that press coverage. Just remember that when you use these, um, you do not control the information. So once you publish it on somebody else's platform, you can't take it down. You can't delete it. Um, I have a podcast that's kind of evolved into a show. And <clears throat> originally, it was only playing on 10 channels. So if we wanted to take something down to edit it, it was easy. And then other people liked the podcast, so they started pulling it the entire uh, recording and putting it onto their platforms. And then before I knew it, there were so many other platforms that were, that had done this. It was like a total, it, it was a huge unnecessary project for us to try to go through and edit things. So when you decide to go for press coverage, make sure it's something that you're going to be proud to have published five years into the future. Um, an example of things that people regret Let's say you worked on a project with a crazy boss. We have all done it. Um, some people have gotten PTSD from the amount of crazy they had to deal with in their project. We all know it. We've all been there. Um, you don't want to talk about that. You want to talk about positive experiences because five years down the road, if you end up having to work with that person again, 
you're like, oh shoot, I did that podcast or I did that episode or I did that, um, that interview with that journalist and they saw it and now they hate me. So I'm going to lose this huge job or huge opportunity because I burned the wrong bridge five years ago, 10 years ago. Um, all right. So let me share the two tools with you and I'm actually going to sit down because okay. All right. And then I can also be closer to the air conditioning. Yay. Um, okay. So the first is EIN. Wire. All right. There you go. This is the first one. Oh, it's not letting me show the link because they always put an obscene amount of tracking in here. Okay. There we go. That's the first resource. And the second one is radioguestlist.com. All right, so those are the two uh, sources that I recommend. Now, if you have never been on a podcast before, you have not gone through media training, business school, they made us all go through media training. Um, if you have never had to do something like that before, I would, uh, at 9x90, we have a specific uh, process that we use to teach people how to be on a podcast episode. So, when we invite someone on the show, a lot of people, it's their first time. So we script everything and then we use that script. So they've kind of rehearsed what we'll be talking about and we pull from that script. So it's still a conversation, but they're able to see, they're able to, they have everything fresh in their mind to know what they want to talk about. Um, and then after the show, we also crop out anytime they say, um, uh, or stutter or say, oh, can we delete that? We crop all that out so that they come across sounding professional. Uh, a lot of podcast shows do not do that because it's expensive and time consuming. So you can go to 9x90 and um, let's see if that's something of interest to you to do that sort of show before you go anywhere else, you can click here. go and you can do that uh, before you hop onto radio guest list okay so step one is your own website step two is getting the press coverage um, and then step three is okay you're building your when you want to build out your personal brand you need to have something that other people can share so when you go on other people's podcasts you're getting access to their following but what are you doing with that? Is that a dead end? Or are you giving those listeners something that tangible, that's like a taste of working with you, a lead magnet? So are you giving them a free checklist for tuning into that episode or a free workbook or some sort of freebie where they go to your website, drop in their email and you send it to them? Um, a lot of people don't do that third step. And that third step is where you take the press coverage that you got and you turn it into business. Um, some people think that, oh, if I get the press coverage, people will just magically flood to me. That works sometimes, but not all the time. Um, having a freebie that you give them that they go to your website and they get it, that guarantees that a higher percentage of people who tuned into the show go to your site. And you want to make it a short URL that is easy for them to remember. So molo9.com slash checklist, molo9.com slash branding. Um, you want it to be something that's short and easy to remember. All right. So those are the three steps told you it's going to be very easy, very fast. And we are only 15 minutes into this, the live Q and a. So let me know what questions you have, um, about this. If any, um, if you don't have any questions or if you'd rather, I just hop to the questions that were asked online. I can do that as well. I'll start opening those up. Right. 
what is the easiest way to build a personal brand? I already just, I just gave you that three-step process. One, your own website. Two, getting the press coverage. Three, having a checklist or some sort of lead magnet that you give to the listeners or readers of that um, particular piece of press coverage. What makes a good personal brand? You have to stand for something, but you also have to be relatable. Um, you have to think of who's in your target market and what information resonates with them. So on your personal page, uh, things that are good to put are like your favorite candy, your favorite movie, um, your favorite food, th things that everyone generally has a favorite of. Things that you wouldn't put are, for example, I stare, I, when I wake up in the middle of the night, it's because I had nightmares of blah, blah, blah. You want things that people connect with that are happy that they could say, oh yeah, me too. And that keep them in a happier state rather than uh, things that will scare them or kind of make them feel alienated from you. What are your initial thoughts about personal branding? It is so incredibly important. Um, all right, let's say you're with a company and you stay with that company for a decade or so. Great. But if you leave that company, do you have to start over? If you don't have a personal brand or if your personal brand isn't tied tightly to that company, closely to that company, then you have to essentially start over and build from build yourself up from scratch. You may have a small group of people who are following your career and they follow you to the next company, but it's a very small group of people. Also, if you um, have a personal brand, it makes your company more resilient to competitors. Uh, what that means is if, let's say a competitor comes out with a copycat product. Well, if you and your personal brand and your story and what you've achieved is part of your company's uh, strategic advantage, then when a competitor comes out and people say, oh, well, this person achieved this before building this, what did you achieve? The competitor can't copy your story unless they worked side by side with you on every single project you've ever done throughout history. So your personal brand, it's not only beneficial for you and uh, your career long-term, it's also beneficial for your company because it makes you the part of the competitive advantage. What are good strategies for managing personal branding? This one's kind of weird. Uh, people, People like it when you're consistent, um, when you step into like a certain persona or a certain character and you kind of own it. They, they want consistency. They don't want you to be crazy showing up in, like if your personal brand is showing up in a different costume every single week for your whatever meeting or show, then you have to own that and be consistent with that. If your personal brand is showing up every week in like a blue blazer, with a scarf, then you own that. You're consistent with that. It's kind of like a, a uniform. You you want to step into that uniform. You get to pick it. You get to decide what you're comfortable with uh, for the most part. Sometimes your um, stylist or PR team will ask for adjustments, but you have to pick something. Uh, think of like Mr. Rogers. Every time at the start of every uh, show, he'd come in and change his sweater and change his shoes. And he kind of did that as a consistent start to every single show. So every single episode. So kids expected it and they were comfortable with that. Um, what is the best book on personal branding? There are two. Okay, there's two, actually, wait one second, let me see. Oh, okay, more than two. Okay, there are a lot of books. <laughs> I didn't I didn't remember how many I read on this topic until you asked that question. Okay, so 
Fascinate is amazing. Um, I listen to it as an audiobook and I have the physical copy. You could do both. Um, I found it was easy to listen to and follow along with as an audiobook, whereas some other books I would not recommend ever doing as an audiobook. This one's incredible when you're trying to figure out what your brand identity should be. Um, I didn't realize what, like, until I read this book, that like certain quirks or certain preferences about my personality um, were a brand archetype. So this book is very, it's, it's an absolutely incredible if you're, um, if you're thinking about, it's, it's by Sally Hogshead. Um, if you're thinking like, okay, how do I pick the brand identity to step into? What is my brand identity? Why are brand identities so powerful and so effective? This is the book for that. Okay. This one is incredible. It just explains how humans get attached to different brand archetypes. So when you step into a brand personality, when you own your quirks and when you um, are okay with them being like front and center, then people, uh, then people get attached to that. There was something that's really interesting. You can notice this in yourself. I ha there was this one female entrepreneur that I like followed on social media. Her videos were always popping up at the top of my Instagram. Absolutely loved her. She got major plastic surgery done, like completely changed her face. Um, I didn't follow the YouTube channel where she had announced it. So the first few videos, I was like, did they swap her out with an intern? Because you notice. Um, and I don't know, after, after they completely just redid her face, I couldn't watch her anymore because you could tell she also wasn't completely comfortable with the plastic surgery. Uh, so we do tend to get attached to people, their identities and, um, yeah, things like that. Okay. Uh, this explains how people get attached. So it will help you to understand why certain things that you decide to make public need to be consistent. Um, so this book is really good at just helping you to understand the importance of consistency with your personal brand. This one was okay. Um, the reason I didn't like it is, uh, okay, so Russell Brunson does this technique where he starts out really high level and then he goes deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Um, and that, that mental model, it's called going from global to analytical. And for me, I like the global map in like one second. And then I like to break into each piece. So my mental model is different from his, the way that I look at the world and the way that I uh, learn things is different from the way he teaches them. So that's why this wasn't one of my favorite books. Um, 1 million followers. Oh, and I also felt like he was very bombastic. Um, there were a lot of things that could have been said in a much shorter, uh, period of, or in much less text. Um, yeah. And so that, that's the other reason I didn't like this book. Uh, 1 million followers. I liked this one. I thought he was very succinct. He's very good at explaining why he picked different social media platforms for conducting different experiments. So like he went down to the exact costs and as a numbers, like someone who loves numbers, um, I, the, I really loved this book because he did a lot of this cost this much, this cost this much. This is why I made that decision. Okay. And then free PR. This one is amazing. It has so many templates and tables in here, which... Uh, can you see them with the lights washing it out? There's a lot of tables and uh, like this to help you understand the value of different things. Um, I, I don't know. I, I loved how, how they packed so much knowledge and information into such a small book. And just look at the difference between these two. Look at the size difference. And I learned way more from this book, which is much smaller, much smaller page count um, than the other one, which is much larger. <sighs> So yeah, sorry. I said I was going to give you two books and I gave you what? Five. All right. So, uh, next question on personal branding. What are the best ways to build my personal brand online? All right. So something that a common mistake that people make is, um, not choosing a niche. So they kind of want to share everything they discover. Um, I like biohacking. I'm really into biohacking. Uh, biohacking is where you try out 
different supplements, ice baths, morning rituals, whatever, to optimize your brain performance and your physical performance and optimize your health. Um, I do not have a blog about biohacking. I know that it would take way too much energy to create an entire separate blog and brand identity for biohacking. People who are also into biohacking, when we meet up at networking events, they'll talk to me about what they're doing. I'll talk to them about what I'm doing, but it's not something that I've created a company around. Um, biochemistry is very complex. A lot of things can go wrong from it can work for one person and not for the next. So for me, I know that the amount of time and energy that I would need to put into making sure that what I'm recommending works for the right types of people and putting all those different types of people that it works for and all the different types of people it doesn't work for. I don't have the time, energy, resources, self-discipline to write all of that out. So with your personal brand, you can tell people that you like certain things, but you don't have to put it on your blog. If you have your blog like listed as a hot mess because you're trying to write something for everyone, you end up writing nothing for no one. Is personal branding a fad? No, it is a strategic uh, business move and it is a very important one. There's something called moat analysis. And I actually use personal brand, the personal brand identity of founders as one of the number one competitive advantages. And oftentimes we are able to use the personal brand to destroy competitors very quickly. So I would not say that, uh, Personal branding is just a fad or something that you should kind of check off the box when you get a chance to. <sighs> Personal branding or business branding, you should have both. You should absolutely have both. The business is an entity that one day you might want to sell. Um, the personal brand is usually what is used and required in order to get the business off the ground. So I'd say the first 100 to 500 users for Molo 9. No, actually the first 300 were all people who knew me or they were on my social media following or they knew a friend of a friend. So they were all there because of my personal brand. Then when we went with a strategic partner, um, the first 100, maybe 150 from the strategic partner came to get that deal from the strategic partner because they knew me. And so the strategic partner was like, wow, this person has a really successful deal. Let's promote it more to our following. But my personal following was what gave it that initial first round of sales for the strategic partner to realize that this was something worth paying attention to and invest their own money into promoting because they were getting a percentage of the sales as well. So I would say personal branding is the first step, not an afterthought. <sighs> How can I effectively use LinkedIn to build my personal brand? Okay, this is something that I think people do wrong, like tragically wrong. When they're trying to build their personal brand on a social media platform, they post like 10 times a day. Um, I think it's more important to post meaningful content when you have it rather than posting garbage 10 times a day. But there are marketers on either side of the fence about that. And it also depends on what you're selling. Um, what are some tips for personal branding online? I already covered those at the beginning. Step one, you need your own website. Step two, you need the press coverage. And step three, you need um, you need some sort of lead magnet to pull the uh, viewers and listeners to your website. How should I start with personal branding? You start with your website where you list what you've achieved. Who are the best entrepreneurs to learn from about personal branding? Brendan Kane. This guy. Um, Cameron, really, really good. Cameron Harold, I actually reached out to him on LinkedIn. He's amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, his co-author, I was not able to find a way to connect with him um, and talk about his book later, but Cameron Harold. Amazing. Um, Russell Brunson is very good at his own personal branding. Something that he does well uh, is he's 
he always has himself on the picture of whatever he's promoting. He's smiling there in the picture. And then, um, Sally's very good at writing about it, but I think because she does so much work for other people on it, like I haven't really seen her at this, like trying to be at the same level as Russell. I think she invests a lot of her resources, like her time, energy, and budget into her clients and not so much into herself. Okay. What is your definition of personal branding? <clears throat> It's um, coming up with a brand identity for yourself, uh, an identity of how people see you and how they recognize you and how you fit into their business world and how you meet their, help them to meet their goals. What are the best tools to use in personal branding? You want to get people onto your website. A lot of people think it's about being on social media. It's about getting leads off of social media and onto your own site because algorithms can change. Your site cannot. Um, here are a few examples with personal branding. Um, I like numbers, love numbers. I view the world in numbers. Um, I'm a very analytical person. I used to try not to talk about that that much because I thought that it chased people away. And then I realized that it chased people away who don't see the world the same way I do. So they don't appreciate the knowledge and skill set I have. So now I have that included as part of my brand identity because I realized that talking about numbers and analytics and data, um, it deters people who won't connect with me and appreciate my knowledge and experience, but it connects me with people who do see the world that same way. Um, another thing for personal branding uh, would be your identity. My daughter wants us to dye her hair pink. I, I won't <laughs> dye my hair pink. You are supposed to show up looking consistent if that is part of your brand identity. Um, if you work uh, on Broadway where your brand identity is showing up as a different character every week, then obviously go for it. Dye your hair pink. Um, best tools for personal branding would be your own website, email marketing. There's um, a newsletter. It's called Free Code Camp. And all he did is every Friday he would send you five resources for learning to code. That's all he did. And the guy built out like a 2 million person email list. It was incredible. Who are the best global personal brands? My God, look at the celebrities. Celebrities are very good at creating their own personal brands. Um, you have Taylor Swift, you have Beyonce, you have what? Jay-Z, you have Rihanna. Um, Who needs a personal brand? Anyone who likes having security with their income. If you have people that depend on you financially, I know some of the people in the Mullenland community, you have your parents depend on you financially, they're older, or you have kids who depend on you financially. If you have people depending on you financially and you need consistency with your income, you need a personal brand. Because if you lose your job tomorrow, your personal network, the people that follow you, and trust you will follow you to your next business. Um, they also make you more resilient and less likely to be fired because the company that you're working for or working with knows that if you um, if they if they fire you, they lose your following because your following follows you to the next business. Um, there are some companies I've worked with that they don't acquire a company; they acquire key account managers at a company. And then all they had to do is instead of going through months of M&A negotiations and due diligence and everything, they went through like what, a two week interview process, few, like a week, less than a week of negotiations to just bring a new account manager on. Um, what is a personal brand? We already answered that. Can you describe your brand? Boy. Um, I'd say I'm like the concerned older sister. Uh, that's like, that's who I am in real life. And I, and then I realized uh, when I read the book Fascinate that it's not a disadvantage to be open about me viewing the world that way as the concerned and protective older sister. And I think 
um, with the feedback on Momo9 community, a lot of you have realized that's kind of how I am. And that's how I view myself. Like my job is to help you guys succeed and to be protective with you guys um, so that you succeed. And when one of you mentioned that you were having trouble with uh, clients realizing that they needed to do certain projects first, I built that entire <laughs> analytics dashboard so that instead of you just choosing a goal and then saying, but we want to pursue this goal first, you have this whole analytics dashboard now at the forefront so that you bring them there, say, look, these numbers are bad. This is why we need to start with this goal. Um, so that's, I think, the number one thing of my personal brand is what's preventing you guys from succeeding. We actually have a new offer we're coming out with. Um, it's rolling out slowly because I know that this could break my own company, um, but trying to fulfill projects for you on the back end because some people have said their concern is that when they start building their personal brand for being an amazing website designer or being amazing at email automations or whatever it is, getting too many customers and not being able to handle them all. So right now we're working on a side project where we have a process that you see exactly how my team does this project. And then you know, okay, if I, if I have too much work coming into me, I know that I can take this percentage off the top and outsource it to them. Worst comes to worse. Um, how do people succeed in branding themselves? You have to go with a brand identity that is consistent with who you are because you don't want to have, you don't want a brand identity that you have to step into where you feel like you're suffocating and you're crushed because you're having to fit into this mold that doesn't have some elements of who you actually are. Um, your brand identity should highlight your best features and attributes to people that appreciate those attributes. Uh, what's the best way to create someone's personal brand and why is that? Um, I liked, like I keep going back to this book. I thought this book was really good at choosing brands for different founders um, Sally went so far as to create this amazing quiz that you can have founders take and it explains, um, it, it helps you, it has this advanced algorithm on the back end that basically helps you to realize this is the, this is the founder's brand identity. And these are the attributes about that founder that you should highlight so that these skills and weaknesses can be presented to the public in a way that is advantageous for that brand. What are the secrets of building a, pers a powerful personal brand? Consistency. You have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. So you have to choose something that you are comfortable being consistent with. Um, as some of you noticed, we took some time off from live Q and A sessions when uh, Molo Nine was facing um, serious threats from, uh, people who were trying to do a hostile takeover of the company. I learned a lot about law. So thank you to the people who tried to kill me, to cut me out of my company, because I never thought I'd learned so much about legal strategy. Um, but I took a step back from live Q and A's at that point, because I knew that I would not be able to show up and be the person who cares about the audience when there was a risk of those people being in the audience. Um, I knew that I would show up very jaded and upset and that would not be beneficial for anyone uh, that tunes in. Um, why is it important to build a personal brand? We already answered that. What are the guidelines of personal branding? Uh, you don't realize it, but people really get attached to your physical appearance, kind of like I don't know, maybe it stems from like watching cartoons when we're kids, but people really get attached to your physical appearance being semi-consistent. So um, I would be slow to do any major cosmetic changes. Um, sorry, one second. The AC is moving everywhere. Okay, there we go. Um, I would be slow to do any major cosmetic changes. You'll notice in Hollywood how actors and actresses strategically time or choose to time their cosmetic adjustments with the release of certain movies or TV shows. 
Um, and kind of, I mean, they're making millions with their personal brands. So I think they know what they're doing. Um, the other thing is with your personality, you want to say, okay, what are my core attributes and are these beneficial? Do the people that I want to work with find these attributes appealing or not? And if it's an attribute that they find appealing, you focus on it. If it's an attribute that you do not, that they do not find appealing, then you find a way to make it either less in the forefront or you do some personal work to, um, reroute your neural networks, uh, change your habits so that that less appealing um, character flaw is less prominent. Or you hire people that cover that um, for that character flaw that you have. How can I succeed online without personal branding? Okay, so step one is achieving something that people want to know how to achieve. Step two is making a personal brand and telling the story of how you achieve that thing that people want to achieve. The only reason that you would not want to have a personal brand is if you haven't achieved anything. And if you haven't achieved anything, then why should people follow you? What, where are you leading them to? What advantage do they have? Um, what are they going to learn from you if you can't achieve anything yourself? Maybe, and this is what happens a lot, is people have achieved things that they don't realize are super valuable. And then you go to a mastermind or you go into a program or you go to some sort of retreat and you realize that this thing you thought everyone knew how to do is actually super valuable. And then you build your personal brand about around that. But if you don't think you have something valuable enough to create your own personal brand, go study, read, network, go to workshops, go to events, go to conferences, talk to people, join masterminds, do these, go out and learn about the society around you, because I'm sure you'll see that there's something you've achieved that's unique and valuable to others. Is a personal website important for my personal brand? Yes. Um, if some of you go on Instagram, you'll notice that I have like five Instagram profiles because every time Instagram made a different change to their algorithm, they would close my account. Why? Because I was using growth hacking tactics that were no longer allowed. So did I deserve it? Sure. Um, but the point is, if Instagram was the way that I was telling people to connect with me, I would be screwed because I don't have access to those Instagram accounts anymore. Um, you don't have control over social media accounts. You don't have control over when they shut down, how they're acquired by other people. It changes in different privacy policies, terms and conditions. There are so many things you cannot control. With your personal brand, you need to be in control of it. You need to protect that. That is synonymous with your income. Um, that is synonymous with how you take care of your family, your loved ones, your friends, how you pay for your plane tickets to visit your high school buddy or whatever you do. You need your personal brand. You need to be in control of it. You need to protect it. You need your own website. If you can get your full name.com, that's amazing. If you can't, you want to get something that is synonymous with your name. Um, if like, for example, I had addypineapple.com for the longest time, and then, um, I was able to get addysusan.com. So then I grabbed that, but you want to try to get your name as your URL, your website, you have control of, you can change it however you want to, whenever you want to. If you want to put a booking portal on there, you can have it. If you don't want a booking portal, you can take it off. If you go to addysusan.com right now, you'll notice I still give people the option to book a call with me, but I used a strategic design in the buttons so that people click on Molo 9 instead, and they go to Molo 9 instead. Am I saying, don't book a call with me, go to Molo 9 instead? No, I put the two buttons there. I put the prices of the two so people see that Molo 9 is a massive deal compared to booking a single call with me. And I put those both there. So it's like uh, two choices, the A minus A or the decoy effect or the A minus A strategy. It's called two different things depending on which book you marketing book you read. Um, but I was able to do that because it's my website. 
So you want your own website so you can control the narrative, you can control the flow of information. You want to get out in front of bad press. I used to model in Europe. Um, I took those photos offline. Then someone found them and he said that he was going to blackmail me by showing my modeling photos. And so then I put them back on Instagram and back on my website. And I was like, how are you going to blackmail me? I just put them up there. Um, so with your own website, you're able to control, uh, you're able to take a lot more control. Um, people will try to, if someone tries to blackmail you with certain things about your past, you're able to quickly go put it on your website, uh, with your own narrative of what happened and how it happened. So it makes you a lot more resilient to bad actors who would try to derail your success. Best resources for personal branding, your website, email. Um, we could also put radio guest list and EIN press wire in there. And 9x90, if you haven't been on a podcast yet and you want a dry run, you want us to crop it, um, you have that. Robert said, lots of people think their appearance doesn't matter as much as your work does. Commenting on having tattoos on, the, uh, on a neck and face if you want to hold authority in a space other than music, art, and design. Oh, yeah. Your personal brand has to has to be a reflection of, it has to work within your niche. Absolutely. Um, like my daughter with the pink hair. I cannot show up to meetings with pink hair. Um, I'm on the younger side. So when I walk into certain meetings, and if I know if I were to walk in with pink hair, I would immediately be... They would be saying, oh, you remind me of my granddaughter, which is not what I want. So you definitely want to um, want to think about any cosmetic changes you're going to make, how that uh, is interpreted by people. For the live Q&A sessions, I put makeup on. Um, it makes me look more, more professional when compared with the other videos on YouTube. When I go to meetings and everyone tends to be male over the age of 50, I don't wear makeup. I put my hair in a bun. I'm wearing one of my uh, European scarves. I'm wearing a blue blazer and I match almost everyone in the room. You want to blend with the people around you. It's not uh, being inconsistent. It's showing them that you know what their standards are um, and you know how to amend your way of thinking and you know how to sit into their step into their worldview, see the world the way they do. So you definitely want to, when you go into different meetings, you want to show that you can match everyone else in the room. Um, one trick I use if I'm walking into a meeting and I don't know who's going to be there, I have a scarf in my purse. I wear my blazer and then I have a white or uh, like a, a light colored t-shirt on underneath. Um, some of you might be thinking, wow, a t-shirt's really casual. But when I was in California, like the t-shirts were the standard and I walked into certain startups where I had this and I slipped my jacket off. It was like, oh, let me just take this off. So then I was in a t-shirt like everybody else. I've also walked into situations where everyone's with a silk tie and I quickly took this, wrapped it up like a tie and I was there matching everybody else. You want to show um, everyone that you know what their standard is and you know how to meet that standard. And one way you do that is with your physical appearance. Okay, who are some personal branding experts? I already listed them with the collection of books right here. Put that back up again so you can see it. And later they will edit this in video to flip it so you can not read it in reverse. All right, how are you rebuilding your personal brand? I wouldn't say I'm rebuilding it. I would say that I am adding to it. I used to not have my kids at all mentioned on my site um, because it's uh, I was afraid of the security risks of that. Um, and then I realized that a lot of people like to connect over the fact that I have kids and they have kids and they like to talk about that stage. So now I have photos on there um, of them and there's other details that I don't keep in the public image so that I still feel like they're protected and safe. Um, oh, I used to not talk about the fact that I paint. Um, I find it's very relaxing. 
Um, it's an amazing way to connect with my kids. I have a one-year-old and a seven-year-old. And so the age gap makes it hard to um, find things that they both enjoy. So we do watercolor because if they spill it, it's very easy and fast cleanup. When they paint themselves, it's easy to take off. Um, but it also gives them practice with the, the hand-eye coordination. Um, and it's uh, good for their mental health. It's teaching them mental health strategies and how to uh, bring themselves to a calm state if they ever get stressed or overexcited. Um, and I used to not talk about that the whole art side of things as much. Um, but I did recently put all of my paintings back on addysusan.com as well. All the paintings from time to time, I'll post one on Instagram if I'm selling it. And then, um, usually some, a friend or family member will comment in, uh, messages like I want to buy that painting and this is my offer and we'll negotiate and they, they buy it. Um, but let's see. What is your personal brand mantra? I wouldn't say there's one specific mantra. I would say that there's a lot. Um, the, but I guess the core one is um, take care of your people. Uh, if you don't want to be friends with somebody, then you probably will not enjoy working with them. So you want to be friendly and you want to, so that you attract people that you would enjoy working with and enjoy being friends with. Um, you don't want to have to go to a tech conference where people that are following your personal brand want to sit and have a coffee with you. And you'd rather chew glass than have a coffee with them because your personal brand is so different from who you are as a person. Um, how can I use social media to promote my personal brand? Okay. So that is one thing that Russell does explain really well. I think it's in this book. Give me a second to see if I can find it quickly. It's a really easy five-step process. Um, sorry, I, I, I read uh, like four marketing books at a time. I usually have one playing on my phone. I have one that I'm reading when I can't do an audio. And then I have one that I read in my office every night. So Sometimes I forget which book it was in. Oh, here it is. Okay. So it's on page 105 if you get the physical book. Um, and he has two social media posts where someone puts a five-step process. And then what they say in the comment section or in the description is that you can go to their website to download the actual checklist. So it's a high-level five-step process. You go to their website, download the full checklist, and then you're joining their, um, then you're getting their lead magnet. And he calls it a pre-funnel, he calls it pre-funnel content. I think that's the best way to use social media to promote your personal brand. And then you would talk about things that, um, that they will learn from you uh, and from your business. Okay. Um, how can I use social media? Okay. I just said that one. Um, do casual first names hurt personal branding in your career? That depends on what your brand identity is. So for some people, they prefer to call me Addie Susan. They prefer my whole name. Other people just prefer Miss Susan or a D. It, it doesn't really matter. I don't care. I know that for them, they are emotionally attached to whichever name or label or title they've given me. And I let them have that because someone's um, attachment to your personal brand, it's not about you. It's about how you fit into their world and how you help them to meet their goals. Um it's kind of like Mickey Mouse. Like some, my kids call him uh, Mickey or Mickey Mouse or the mouse. It, it doesn't matter. It's um, it really depends from person to person. You may find that uh, with your unique business, your unique target market, people prefer to call you a different way. I have some friends I only call them by their last name because, like one of my groups of friends, there's a bunch of guys named Andrew, so we call each one of them by their last name. Um, yeah, it, it, it depends. <sighs> what, 
What are some effective strategies for building strong personal brand online? Oh, okay. The most effective one is not pushing your company. It's pushing and representing your niche industry. So being a spokesperson for branding in general, being a spokesperson for biohacking, instead of saying, oh, I'm a spokesperson for this biohacking company. If you're a spokesperson for biohacking in general, um, anytime they need an expert uh, witness on something or an expert uh, guest uh, guest interview, um, guest speaker, you want to be the person they think of. And you can't be that person if you're only a spokesperson for your company. But you can be that person if you're a spokesperson for that industry. (sighs) What does your personal brand say about you? Hopefully good things. (laughs) You want it to be something that... uh, Okay. Okay, so Robert just asked... um, Would you say having a unique selling proposition is critical to branding? Do you consider branding the same as positioning in the marketplace? If not, what are the distinctions? Okay, so for those of you who don't know what positioning is, give me one second to grab that book. Okay, so we're talking about lots of books today. If you want your book talked about, you can mail a copy to Mobile9's address. I'll read it, and when the subject arises, we can bring it up. Um, Okay, so this is a very good book on positioning. Um, If you don't know what positioning is, it's basically... Think about being in a map. All right, you want to think about being on a map um, in someone's mind or in someone's business world. Where do they put you? Are you, where do you fit in to what they need to do or where they need to go in order to meet their goal? So let's say somebody wants to drive from coast to coast. They want to drive from North Carolina to California. Positioning, are you North Carolina? Are you California? Are you somewhere along that path or are you up here and they don't need to drive through your state in order to get where they want to go with your positioning? Um, you, you do want to explain to them how you fit into what they need to achieve. Um, so with, with Molo nine, okay. It's, it's kind of use, useless to people without my knowledge and experience. We tried a few years ago having guest contributors and it royally flopped because the first thing they said is, well, the person that just wrote wrote that, what did they achieve? And if they had not passed the like 10 million, 20 million, hundred million dollar threshold with whichever company they were talking about or sharing a use case on, it didn't resonate with the Molonine audience. They wanted to know about hyper growth. They wanted to hear from people who had achieved hyper growth. So With our positioning, it's, okay, if you want to go on the journey of hyper growth with your startup, this is where we are. We're going to help you get from here to here. And then when you get here, we're going to connect you with someone else who gets you from here to here. Um, You definitely want to have, you definitely want to have um, a, you, you want to make it clear that you have a key role to play within uh, their journey. Um, so yes, I would definitely say that it's critical. Um, people know that, and this is kind of how my personal brand got started is people would, when I was in college, um, the recession hit the housing crisis, the 2008 recession hit a lot of my friends or university, it's called university in some schools, the after high school. So college slash university, Um, depending on which country you're in, a lot of friends had to create their own businesses in order to finish paying for school. 
um, I got one of my jobs that I took up was working with this fashion startup and her um, internal operations were, were kind of a mess. Um, I was a third generation model, but both of my parents were also small business owners. So I knew what a well-oiled machine looked like and I knew that we weren't there. So she was this creative genius that had absolutely amazing ideas, absolutely amazing connections. And all I did was put processes in place so that people could come in to help her with her creative genius and getting it out into the world. So she would want a fashion show. And so I would put together the list of this is when the makeup artist should show up. This is when each model should show up. So every 15 minutes, um, the makeup artist we're all getting another round of models that they were putting makeup on. So everyone was dressed and ready for when the fashion show started. Um, She uh, got a, yeah, it it was, it was an amazing experience, but because of that and because of her success, um, people and the night and day difference from when she had done it by herself to when I started working with her, um, people realized, okay, I might know something about entrepreneurship and running businesses successfully. And classmates and friends that were in the other dorms started to ask me questions about this. And I didn't realize this should be my personal brand identity um, until much later. But that's kind of people were asking me for help with these things. And so I knew that what that the knowledge that I hadn't really thought was that valuable. That's when I realized it was valuable. Um, That's why I say, if you don't think that, you know, something that's a value, go out meet people, connect with people, join workshops, start talking with those around you. And you'll realize there's something that you grew up knowing that's valuable. Whether or not you realize it now, you'll realize it after you connect with others. All right. Um, Oh, we're at nine, we're at 1030 already. Okay. Um, So any, any other questions or are we, are we good on personal branding? Uh, next week we will, this is what we're going to do in the telegram channel. I'm going to put a list of the topics we have, um, as ideas for the upcoming live Q and a sessions. We are going to go back to doing focused sections. So each live Q and a focuses on a specific topic. Um, I found that's much more helpful than you're welcome, Robert. Um, I found that that's much more helpful than just generic live Q and A's because with the generic live Q and A's, you have to listen to so many other people's questions being answered that are useless to you before you can get to your question being answered rather than fully comprehending a topic or getting ideas of where you should go with a topic by the end of a session. So we're going back to the um, topic focused live Q and A format that we used in the beginning. Uh, next week we'll be focused. We will, um, go with the founder freedom framework. That's the, um, we're working on having it to you guys, emailed to you guys by Friday. Um, it will be in Molo nines library, hopefully by Friday as well. Um, if not sooner. And then, uh, that's what we will discuss during the next live Q and a session. After that, um, we have several different directions we could go. I will put all those topics into Telegram and you can vote there. All right. It was great hanging out with you guys. Um, I look forward to seeing you back online on Telegram and next week. Have a good one. Bye.